to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and we are in the finale for Veil Wraith. This comes from Tristan Hall and Hall or Nothing Productions. We'll pick things up exactly where we left them off in the first episode. If you haven't checked that out, there's an overview and part number one, which goes over the setup as well. A link to that will show up in the top right hand corner. Check that out first fully before checking out the remainder of this finale. Now, where we left it off in the last video is I had acquired two keys, of which I've used them fully so they are basically sitting face down right now we need three more because we need a total of five keys inside of vignette number one which we're currently playing which is the lost ruins and we have a portal which we need to get into the threat area that portal is sitting right there but we don't get the portal until we have five keys and also have defeated all the foes that are inside this vignette in this case for vignette number one it's only a single foe and it's the goblin king once we take him down and have five keys in our possession then we can head to the portal hopefully fast enough before our spirit dwindles all the way down to the bottom or the arch fiend finds us instead so without further ado let's begin picking up where we left off in the last video these are the two cards that i have in hand so you have an idea as to what i'm working with currently and we're going to dive right into grabbing the next threat so let's find out what is coming our way here we have a mystic and as you can see here this mystic is going to be pretty high on the influence it's a five we know that when we reveal a mystic we have to go through our threat deck until we find a key so i'm going to go through all those cards but i will show you them because you're able to see them as we go and then we will grab that key and place it in the threat area everything else will be shuffled on top key of love is the one that we found so these two right here the pariahs they're going to be shuffled and placed on top so we've already got our next key to go after we're going to need a four explore in order to take this which isn't too bad and thankfully right now we've actually stored up quite a bit on our explore so we should actually be able to grab that key fairly quickly at this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw to see what memory I get in my hand. I have one that's going to give me an extra influence, Memory of Honor. The first thing I'm going to do is use the Explore action for three. I'm also going to take away one of these to boost it up to four, keeping one on there. And this is going to shuffle down the row. Once I use it, everything else is going to go up. You'll see how that's going to be handy in a second. And by using this Explore action, we're able to go ahead and take Key of Love. So I can add this to the keys that I have over here. But first... First, I will mention the fact that when we turn this one, we get an additional available action. If we flip it, we add one power token to an influence action. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead right away. I'm going to turn this to get an additional available action. And then I'm going to end up flipping it as well in order to add that influence to a current action in play, which means one power token will be going right here. And I'll be able to go ahead and then use that second action. This works out quite nicely. My second action I plan on using is influence, which is already up to a three, thanks to the revolving that happened after I used my explore action. It's way up there, plus the plus one I just got on top of it and I'm going to use a memory from hand to boost this up even further to a five in total this will be discarded this will allow me to go ahead and deal with the mystic that is up here to make sure we don't take two hit on our spirit this one is used this power token is gone and it will move to the end of the row always shuffling down to the first position next up I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tilt my fight action getting ready for a future fight and get a plus one on that and it's also worth mentioning on the lost ruins it states right here defeated keys we get a spirit boost of plus one. I'm currently at 19. We gathered a key, so we're going up to 20. Our spirit is back up to full 20. Just like that, we're through a round. And there's one thing I want to mention in terms of the combined action that you can do on your turn. Remember where you can go ahead and take some cards from your hand. So for instance, I could take these two cards in my hand and their values in the bottom left-hand corner are one. So if I was to combine them together, I'd be able to get in a plus one power token, as I mentioned in the first video. Well, the final ruling in the final rule book is a bit different now. And instead of it being a power Power up of plus one which will stay of course on a card round by round unless used the combined action and that boost of plus one in the case of my example would have to be used in the turn that it was combined together that's worth noting it's also worth mentioning in terms of the combined action that you can go beyond the five power limit that is normally in place for the power tokens. So in future vignettes, when you really need a lot of boost, you're gonna be doing a lot of combining. 
Let's move on to the next one and see what we get in the threat area. All right, we got a pariah, and it is a threat. It's the first time one of these have come out, and I want to mention something around these guys. The pariah is pretty nasty. As it states on the card here, you place this in your discard pile when you defeat it. So once we take it out with an influence of three, it's not going to go in the threat discard with all the ones we've already taken out. It's actually going to go down below near my memories deck. It won't be in my deck just yet, as there's two ways during vignette number one that the pariah can enter my deck and eventually get into my hand which can cause problems because it just slows me down and doesn't give me a card that's productive i'll tell you how those two ways happen the first way of course it starts off by taking out the pariah and ends up in your discard pile and the way it gets in your deck is if you burn through your entire memories deck and you need to reshuffle it back together obviously you're taking the discard shuffling it up and at that point you've got a chance to pull one of these things and it essentially is a blank it does nothing for you when you draw it during your turn. The second way that vignette number one throws curveballs at you is with the hobgoblins. And, and thankfully on my part, I've taken out the four hobgoblins early. This does not always happen, but if they had have gone after the pariahs or any number of the pariahs, those hobgoblins, when they come in into the threat area, they immediately force you to shuffle your discard pile into your deck, which obviously speeds up and increases the chances that you're gonna land these pariahs much faster, much more often. So let's go ahead and draw a card for myself and see what I get to add to my memories. I've got Memory of Knowledge, swap any two actions on the action power track. That's really handy. I'm going to hold on to that for a very advantageous spot in this playthrough. We'll see if I can make that work to my advantage. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm go I'm, I like how these actions are currently spread out perfectly for the uh, Pariah. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and do an influence action like so. So basically nothing is revolving here because it's at the very end in the one position. Gives me a one, I'm gonna add two to it and that's gonna make it a three, which is enough to get rid of this thing. And remember, this thing goes in my discard pile. So it's going down to the bottom left, right next to my deck. Now, the next thing I want to do is work my way back up to my Explorer being a little bit more powerful because if another key comes out, I want to be ready to grab it. So we're going to go ahead and tilt this one up, which allows me to grab a plus one token and throw it on. And for now, I'm quite happy to keep these two cards in hand. We're all squared away and ready for the next round. Let's go ahead with a threat here and another one is coming. Of course, we knew these two were coming because we had to draw our way through after getting a Mystic. So I knew this was going to come next, but thankfully, look at that. It's only a one and I've already got exactly what I need for this. this is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead right away and I'm going to use this for the one. Although just before I get too excited, let's make sure we draw a card up. Uh, we got ourselves Memory of Home. That's good. It'll help us with our Explorer action. So first off, influence it's not going to shuffle or rotate at all it's going to stay in this position for one it takes out the pariah which then goes into my discard pile so those are starting to load up a little bit i'm going to continue to bump up my explorer here making this more powerful i want to keep the fight in that position for now also because I got a funny feeling at some point in time I'm going to need it. Looking at the cards I have in hand, I have nothing to boost my fight at all. So keeping that at the, the uh, four level in terms of how much I can pump out there is pretty good. So we'll stop there and we'll reset. Next threat off the top of the deck is a Mystic. This is going to force another pull for the key. So let's see how far we go. We got a Pariah coming. We've got an Enforcer. We've got the Goblin King. Oh my gosh. So he is on the way. We know he's coming soon and we're not going to know exactly when. The Fighter, another Mystic, a Goblin. I'm still looking for a key here. There it is. Key of Sight. So we got a really nice look at what's coming up thanks to that uh, Mystic. Again, very thematic that we can see some of these cards. We just have to shuffle them now and place them back on top of the deck. So we have no idea where the Goblin King is going to be, but we know he is showing up soon. So we want to get ready for that. So I'll go ahead and shuffle these pretty well, I think, at this point, and we'll just lay them back on top of the deck. Let's go ahead and find out what I get from the memory deck. I got something to help me boost my spirit, and that's pretty good because I got two of these now. Now, if I don't need to boost my spirit, I could think about combining them if I need to. So here is where I'm thinking of using Memory of Knowledge, and I really hope this is the right time to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. It's going to allow me to swap uh, any two actions on the action uh, power track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse these. So I'm going to put fight down to the bottom and we're going to put influence to the top. 
And then that is just a swap. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and use the influence action to take care of the mystic that's here so we don't have to deal with her in the coming future in terms of taking a spirit away from us. We're going to rotate all the cards along so things kind of go back up. I'm trying to get that fight back to the top position again. Uh, but as you can see, the bonus here is that the Explorer is now at three. Um, I don't have the ability to do a second action this turn, but I am definitely set up to grab this key in the near future. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this fight action in order to boost it up by another one. And that's going to do it. We're going to reset at this point. All right, let's see what threat is coming after us now. We know the Goblin King is coming soon. And there he is. It didn't take too long. So he is here. So as you can see on the Goblin King card here, we need to get six influence in order to deal with this one right here. And down below, we need six fight. And you can see right beside each of the numbers is an asterisk, which means we need to resolve each of them before we take the Goblin King out. This is where we use these crystals to just place over top of what we've already completed until both of them are resolved. And then we can take out the Goblin King. In the meantime, while we're not not taking him out though he is going to be going after us by taking away two spear from us but once we actually take him down our spirit will go up by one the next thing here it does state is when we defeat we gain two power tokens so this is actually a pretty good time for the Goblin King to show up because we don't have any other threats to deal with so we can really hone in on him and take this foe down. Remember, we take this foe down, we've got him down, the only foe in vignette number one, and three keys, and we're two keys away from then seeing the portal and trying to get through it with an explore action. So we're getting there, we're getting close. Let's go ahead and draw a card from our memories deck, see what we get. We got Memory of Cold. This says, ignore a spirit cost of one spirit threat this round. So basically, which is pretty good this is going to allow us to maybe negate some of the nastiness coming from the goblin king because we're probably not going to be able to take it out this round here's my plan we're going to go ahead and do an explore action right now in order to take the key so we're going to go ahead tilt this like so we're using everything here which is a total of six that's going to allow us to take the key we're going to go ahead and move these down the row this one goes all the way to the first position and is used this key is now ours which is the key of sight so we have our fourth key at this point and it states on here we can turn it to use one additional available action which i plan to do right away in this round and then we can flip it to add one power token to an explore action which could really help us out later on so for now i'll go ahead and place this up here we're just going to turn it because i'm going to definitely do that extra uh, action so we've seen now that the fight one has jumped up it's now up to five which is great and we know for the goblin king we need six now i don't have anything else i can do in my hand but i do have the ability to do a combined action so i'm going to use these two memory of creation cards which would normally be used to actually boost our spirit we're going to combine them for a boost of one to this fight action which i'm taking my second action so those go in the discard this is going to go like this this is a total of six two here three here and then one from the combined this will rotate down the row like so and that is going to cover one the fight one that we just resolved so the one we need now is six influence and look what i've done i've not only taken the key done a really good fight action but i've also set myself up with the influence in the highest position and i'm not done yet so i'm going to go ahead and tilt this one up to get a plus one here and i'm going to go ahead and use memory of cold from my hand it says to ignore a spirit cost of one uh from this round so that's great so basically when we're doing this they're dealing with the threat here we can reduce this from a hit of two to just one so just one is coming through so we'll be dropping from 20 down to 19 and then we'll reset everything up overall that was a fantastic turn and the other thing to mention is that we did gain a key there at the very end but the thing is timing on this we gained the key we were already at 20 so we can't heal beyond 20 and then at that point once our turn is done we then check to see what spirit we get hit with and we had one coming from the goblin king so no the key that i just got won't actually save me from that one spirit coming from the goblin king so we are going from 20 down to 19 okay so we're ready for the next round let's find out the next threat here and it is a pariah 
Ah, uh, another one of these things. Now this time, oh no, it's exact. Now this is where things get kind of rough when you start having requirements that are similar. So we have an influence of six needed here for the king. Pariah needs two, but that is going to slow us down if I start dealing with the Pariah first. So you could see this threat area getting a little bit more crazy as we go. Also look, minus two spirits. So now these things are pumping minus four at us. That is gonna be a problem. I got the Memory of the Veil, vale, or Memory of Veil, vale, which is a plus two to my Explore action, so that's not bad, but it's not what I need right now. So at this moment, there is nothing I can do to get this Influence action all the way up to six in this round. I can get it to five as my best. Right now it's four. I could combine these two cards to get a plus one, but guess what? That's not going to be enough to take out that king, so it's going to be sitting around for a little bit longer. So what I'm going to have to do is tilt this thing to boost it up to be ready for next turn. But guess what's coming next turn? Another threat. Yes, and guess who's also sticking around the Pariah? And guess how much spirit damage I'm taking? A lot. So we, we have to decide now what I want to do next. Now, the thing is, I may want to change my mind on this because there's another way you can get yourself out of the weeds. So let's actually show you how that works. You can, instead of tilting first, when you know what you're kind of going after, we can choose to just go ahead and use one of these actions down here. So let's say fight, for instance. I'm not really uh, looking to do anything with fight in the near future. So I'll just use this, allowing me to draw a card. And we can just hope that I get something that's going to boost my influence. So let's see what we get. No, we got Memory of the Veil, so that did not help. No rotation happening, so now I feel safe to go ahead and tilt this. So sometimes doing things in the correct order is also going to help with your strategy. This is something that I truly love about this game, and that's that sense of you feel like you're on top of it, you've got everything under control, and within a single round, things change quite quickly. And just like that, we've taken a big time hit to our spirit. Now, just as a reminder, up in the top right hand corner, I have a key, but it's only going to at this point, if I flip it over, it just gives me a power token towards an explore action, which is something that I'm not currently going after. So that's going to probably sit there for a bit. I'm using everything at my disposal at this point to try to deal with what's in the threat row. But guess what's coming right now? A brand new threat as we've gone ahead and reset, taken all of our wonderful spirit damage. We now have a goblin showing up here and this one has a four fight value that is brutal and as you can see here in the center of this card it states coward defeat remove from the game so once we take this goblin out it goes out of the game for this entire vignette and I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but there was a minus two spirit on that one as well. That is absolutely vicious. We're now up to minus six. So we definitely need to start getting ahead of these threats. This is really bad. Okay, so we got ourselves, oh my gosh, no, it's an explorer. Uh, so memory of home. All right, we got some work to do here. So first off, I know out of the gates here, we need to do some combining in order to pull off anything. So I'm going to go ahead and combine the two memory of home cards that I have here, which is going to give me a plus one to an action, choosing it to use on influence. So this is going to give three, four, five, six. So we're going to go ahead and use all of it in order to take down the Goblin King. We still have all kinds of spirit damage coming at us potentially but this foe has been taken out so we're just going to place this in the foe area for now the goblin king will rest over there after being defeated and now we know we just need one more key and then we can go to the portal now we took that influence action so this needs to go to the number one position like so and we're in quite a nasty position because I use the influence on the Goblin King, which means I can't go ahead and tilt it in order to boost up to get ready to take out the Pariah. On the Goblin side, it needs a four fight, and I've only got two here, so I could tilt it, but it still won't even be ready to take it out uh, for another round unless I get lucky with a card, or I could potentially combine. Uh, I don't have the ability to do it another action this turn, so it looks like tilting is all I'm going to be able to do here. So we're going to go ahead and tilt the fight one up to get myself ready to deal with that Goblin later on. So even though we were able to take care of the Goblin King in this current round, still four spirit is coming off. And this is what I was trying to warn you guys about earlier on. This game does not let up if you don't take care of that threat area. Let's go ahead and find out what the next threat is going to be. Joining the row, we have a Mystic. That's good. It's going to force the next key to come out. So we get to draw cards until we find it. So let's go ahead and see how far along we're going to need to go to get that key quite a few in there wow might be very much near the end of the deck 
It was literally the last card. That's crazy. So the key of power. That threat row, I tell you, it's getting pretty intimidating. Now it's at five in terms of the spirit it's going to be throwing. And we've got some high values in there to take care of. And it's across a number of different stuff. But influence seems to be the one that's most important. And unfortunately, that's my lowest action currently. Let's go ahead and draw up a card and see what I get. I got Memory of Heart. This one says use one additional available action. That's actually a really good card to have at this point with all the crazy threats that I have to deal with. But we're also super close to getting the portal in play here. So let's see how this is going to pan out. This is going to be a pretty wild turn. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use an explore action for three. I'm going to give it a two boost from Memory of Veil. Vale. That is going to be a total of five, which is enough to grab the key of power. I will quickly show you guys what's on this card. It states turn, use one av additional available action or flip it as well as another option. Add one power token to a fight action. So that can really come in handy. We'll go ahead and place it up there. So right now we do have all the keys in our possession and we've also dealt with the Goblin King as well. So at this point in time, even though there's all these threats in here, and of course, because I've done the explore action, the first thing I should do is just move these things down like so, is at this point in time, the portal now comes into the threat area. And why is this? Because as it states right on the portal card itself, place into the threat area after all five keys and all foes are defeated, which I just did. The one thing I get as a benefit for taking the key of power as well is I'm going to be able to tick up my spirit from 11 up to 12. So we're going to be at a 12, which isn't bad at all. The portal is going to show up in the threat area and it just states here to defeat the portal, use the vignettes explore value and if you defeat it, you win. So looking at the vignette for number one, the explore value, it states right here is a three. So that's all we need to pull off. So taking a look at my explore, that's unfortunately the one I used to get the key. So we're not gonna be able to pull it off this turn, but we have potential to deal with some threats going into the next turn where we can hopefully jump through the portal and win this. Let's deal with some threats in the meantime. I'm gonna go ahead right now and use Memory of Heart for the additional available action usage. So one of these two are the only available ones right now. And taking a look at the table here, you'll see two for influence. The Pariah is a two. That's an easy kill. So we'll just go ahead, these rotate positions. This Pariah is gone, goes into my discard. And that's been resolved. So good. We're down to just the Goblin, the Mystic. So minus two Spirit, minus one, and the Portal. What else can we deal with? Well, we still have the fight over here. So why don't we try and go after this Goblin? Seems we have exactly what we need. We'll just turn the Key of Power that we just got to do another available action. We're going to go ahead and turn this fight one. It's going to spend this power token and again, shuffle everything down the row. That is going to wipe out this goblin and it's removed from the game as it mentions here. Gone. Mystic is left with a minus one and the portal remains. So we just mitigated a lot of the spirit hits we would have taken otherwise. So our spirit dial is going to drop from 12 down to 11, thanks to the Mystic. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and start another round after we've reset. So let's find out what threat is coming at us here. And we got ourselves a goblin with a fight value of four. So at this point, my only care is to get through that portal. I'm still going to draw a card from my memory deck, of course. This one gives me actually a uh, fight two. That's pretty good for memory of blood. Based on the cards that I have in hand, as well as the keys, the downed foe, the goblin king, the portal being there, the only thing I care about at this point in time with a couple random threats sitting in here is diving through that portal for the win. So we're going to go ahead right now and we're going to use the explore action, which technically would shuffle these things down the row. That is enough. The three is what matches on the Lost Ruins vignette number one. That is going to allow us to escape through the portal and we win. And now my friends, you have seen a vignette from start to finish. There's a number of things that happen at the end of one of these vignettes. Of course, if you're successful, it's positive things. It's a loss. You're going to be dealing with a loss of one of your ribbons and you only have so many ribbons in order to continue the campaign. Once your ribbons are gone, you are done and must start over. So as of right now, I'm sitting pretty good. The five things that you need to check into at the end of every game is the memory upgrade 
upgrades, which means you're going to be able to upgrade something from your memories, which is a deck we've been drawing from for us throughout the game. There's other rewards. There's non-memory cards. There's a restoring of your spirit. And of course, the next vignette. Now, as a reward for completing the vignette, you can go through your memories deck, and we saw most of these cards when we were going through the gameplay. You can pick one that you don't want any longer, and you're going to remove it and place it in the box, and instead, you're going to go through the upgrades available, and you're going to choose one that has either the same combined value, which is one, or at the most, one higher, so two in this case. So at this point, you're going to go through all the upgrade cards you have available and decide which card you want to add in so long as it's no higher than one up from where you were currently. So we were at one, we're going to two in this case. So any of these cards are available to us, just one of them. And then at some point here in this deck of upgrade cards, things are going to switch over to three. And at that point, we're not going to be able to add those ones in until later on. And those cards will get more and more powerful as you go through the vignettes. It's also worth mentioning that what you just saw was only the cards available in the base game. The expansion is going to add even more to those pools of cards, whether it's the threat cards or it's the foes, the vignettes, and even those memory card upgrades. You're going to get many, many more of all of those. So lots of options to choose from across the board. Now, if we had have lost, we would have just gone ahead, lost a ribbon, and we'd continue playing through that same vignette number one again until we defeat it. Moving on to the other rewards that we gain beyond just a card into our memories deck is at times when you defeat a vignette, there's going to be bonuses around gaining ribbons back. So yes, you can lose ribbons, but certain vignettes will actually give you ribbons back. Other things that can change is that your action cards themselves can potentially be powered up to their higher powered side where they have alternate actions going on here. Like this one states, use the explore action or draw one memory that's normal the next one is tilt to add one power token or flip to add five power tokens that's pretty powerful and you can go ahead and have all of these upgraded over the course of time choosing which one you wish and same goes for these up here they can all uptick by one it's important to note in between vignettes that you may have cards that are not labeled as memory cards. If they're in your deck at the end of a vignette, whether you've won or lost, get those cards out of there. If you leave those things in, you're going to cause yourself a lot more grief than you deserve. They should not be a part of your deck going into the next attempt or as you move into the next vignette. Last but not least, whether you win or lose, you're going to go ahead and bump your spirit back up to the 20 that it started with. And the next step is simply moving on to the next vignette if you won or reattempting the vignette that you lost at if you have ribbons still. And of course, if you don't have any more ribbons, well, your campaign has come to an end. Lastly, I want to touch on some game difficulty variants that you can play with depending on your style of play or what kind of challenge you want when you play Veil Wraith. Easy Dream is the easiest. You start with one action power token already flipped to its advanced action power token side. So one of these three is flipped over to start the game, giving you a little bit of a lag up. Daydream is to spend one ribbon to entirely skip a non-final vignette. Veil Veteran is to start the campaign with just three ribbons, three of these instead of the five. Nightmare for each memory upgrade, either remove a memory or add a memory upgrade, but you don't get to do both like you normally do. And then end world is start the campaign with just a single ribbon instead of five. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this in-depth look at Veil Wraith, the vignette number one. You saw an overview, a full setup, as well as a full playthrough of this first one. We were able to acquire all five keys, take down the Goblin King, and get out of the portal before our spirit dropped to zero or the Archfiend was shuffled into the threat deck and then eventually revealed to come out and defeat us. Thankfully, we avoided the negative side of that equation. Things were all positive. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.